Nearly two years have passed since an earthquake and tsunami disabled Fukushima Daiichi. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company is still struggling to deal with the growing amount of contaminated water on site. TEPCO managers have delayed the operation of a new water treatment facility because of a series of setbacks. Each day, about 400 tons of brown water flows into reactor buildings. It then becomes contaminated with radioactive materials. As the volume increases, so does the radiation levels at the plant. And if a leak happened, the impact on the environment would be more severe. TEPCO managers plan to start operating their new treatment facility last September. It's designed to remove 62 kinds of radioactive elements from the contaminated water, including radioactive strontium. Workers have completed the facility, but they haven't started using it yet because they determined containers for storing radioactive waste from the decontamination process weren't strong enough. The government has ordered TEPCO to conduct additional tests and to strengthen the containers. TEPCO representatives say it wants the facility to begin operating as early as possible this year, but they have set no clear date. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in northeastern Japan are starting off the new year preparing for a delicate operation. Tokyo Electric Power Company crews need to remove hundreds of spent fuel rods that are being stored on site. It's the first major step toward decommissioning the facility, a process that's expected to take 40 years. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited Fukushima Daiichi on the weekend and expressed his intention to extend full government support. The state of emergency is over and we're now in a transition phase with efforts focused on decommissioning. The government will do all it can to help speed up this process. During the initial decommissioning phases, TEPCO workers will need to remove the spent fuel while keeping melted fuel cool. The first part of this process will begin this year. Workers will start extracting spent fuel rods from the storage pool in the Reactor 4 building. They took out two rods last July during a trial. TEPCO engineers have since studied how to remove about 1,500 others. They plan to start in mid-November and complete the process in December 2014, a year earlier than initially scheduled. They want to remove the rods as soon as possible because of concerns about the storage pool's quake resistance. However, high radiation levels at the reactor site will make it difficult to proceed. TEPCO workers have faced other challenges. Last September, they accidentally dropped a 470-kilogram steel beam into Reactor 3's spent fuel storage pool. That set them back nearly three months. It'll be even harder to figure out how to remove the melted fuel. TEPCO managers plan to complete that process within 10 years. To meet their deadline, they'll need to accelerate a preliminary survey and the development of robotic tools. Japanese government officials are investigating workers involved in the nuclear cleanup in Fukushima. They suspect some are endangering citizens by dumping radioactive material. Contractors have been working on the cleanup since July. They have to seal and store radioactive material. But officials with the Environment Ministry are looking into reports that some dumped soil and vegetation in rivers and didn't collect the water they'd used. The officials say they plan to question the workers and find out whether other contractors are also breaking the rules. They say violators face up to five years in jail or a fine of more than $100,000. People across northeastern Japan are looking ahead after the New Year holiday, but those in areas hit hardest by the earthquake and tsunami are reminded daily about their past. Less than a third of the debris has been disposed of properly. Analysts for the Environment Ministry say workers still need to dispose of more than 27 million tons of refuse and sediment. Ministry officials want all of it gone by March of next year. As of last November, workers in Fukushima Prefecture had only dealt with about a tenth of the debris. Those in Iwate had taken care of about a quarter, and those in Miyagi, about a third. Ministry officials say they've had difficulties with handling waste they can't burn and with building incinerators. And they've been challenged in dealing with debris contaminated by radioactive substances, particularly in areas near Fukushima Daiichi. 
Government officials have tried to set up temporary storage facilities or incinerators, but they've run into opposition from municipalities. Ministry officials say they hope to speed things up. They say the pace of removal has delayed efforts to rebuild communities and has put a psychological burden on residents. 155 million yen, or 1.8 million dollars, that's the all-time high price of bluefin tuna weighing more than 200 kilograms fetched at the year's first auction at Tokyo's Tsukiji Market. Saturday's auction started at around 5 a.m. Buyers used hand signals to bid. Tuna caught in waters around Japan and flown from overseas covered much of the auction floor. The $1.8 million tuna was caught in Aomori Prefecture, northeast Japan. The price was nearly three times the previous record set last year. The successful bidder was the president of a big sushi restaurant chain. I'm happy to get such a good tuna, but it was a bit expensive. We'll sell it for the regular price. We want as many customers as possible to enjoy the fish. Japanese bidders have been facing fierce competition in recent years with overseas buyers, especially from China. Bluefin tuna is increasingly popular there. Researchers at the Japanese Fisheries Ministry are accelerating their studies on the commercial aquaculture of bluefin tuna. Their work addresses concerns that a high demand for bluefin tuna leads to over-harvesting of baby fish and a subsequent decrease in tuna resources. Farmers provide nearly 60% of the bluefin tuna Japanese consumers eat. They grow the tuna in fish preserves from babies caught at sea. Universities and businesses in Japan have been studying how to raise bluefin tuna from the hatching phase, but they're having trouble maintaining a stable supply of the eggs necessary for the commercial project. This is because it's difficult to control water temperatures best for spawning adult tuna. Ministry officials plan to build a research facility in western Japan and collaborate with universities and companies to develop farming technologies. Japan's aquaculture project is expected to offer stable supplies of the fish. They hope to raise 100,000 bluefin tuna annually in fiscal 2016.